All right, well, I received the uh, Bantam CNC and it says, please keep on pallet, fragile, do not flip this box. This is how I received it. An accessory box, it's a little bit crushed, but it's no big deal. Nice and Bantam logo and paper. Uh, okay, some kind of intro there. And a USB cable with a uh, ferrite bead on it. Uh, standard quarter inch collet, a couple of cutting tools, and uh, they have actually included a quarter inch shaft and then some cheap uh, spindle wrenches. I don't understand why they don't just use real wrenches because honestly in bulk they cost about the same. Um, this is medium density white foam. Actually, this might actually be a heavy, like a 30 pound foam. So with that, this whole box should flip off, yep. Okay, they've definitely fallen prey to the 2021 uh, COVID plastic shortage that we've been dealing with. You basically can't get plastic but with certain sizes, so they've actually made this cover pretty thick. I'm not sure if that was planned or not. Definitely have a stepper sticking out the side. Comical there. Let me get this back in frame here. So, uh, yeah, you definitely got a little NEMA motor sticking out the side there. Moving hazardous parts. Keep fingers and other body parts away. Here's something interesting. It's actually got a foam pad on the bottom here. I wonder if that's for resonance to kind of damp the resonance on the bottom of the enclosure. And they've actually got a cutout in the foam, which is uh, not something this, the packaging supplier did. So this is definitely an after the fact, oh no, something is vibrating piece there. Got some pretty sturdy rubber feet. It looks like they'll stay on there. Interesting that they uh, bolt these hinges on with the plastic in place. Clear windows on the side. Uh, they're actually, uh, how are those attached? It seems like it's got a hole through it. This is a very flimsy outer enclosure here. It's made out of plastic there, but that's okay. It's not load bearing. The load bearing portion is of course here, and that'll be fun to look at here when we get it inside. Uh, got a wire here. The e-stop wires are heat shrink covered, and uh, there's some kind of uh, door latch maybe as well. We'll look at that when we take it apart. I had been curious how it is that they're getting their uh, probing surface, and I thought maybe they were using uh, non-conductive bearings. Let me turn this down a bit here. I thought they were using maybe a non-conductive bearing, so if they used like a ceramic ball bearing, uh, but actually they have a tiny little gasket that's sticking on the side, it's green, you can just barely see it on these sides here. Uh, and that's to basically uh, prevent this from contacting that. And then of course they're running this wire here to complete the circuit. It's interesting. You know, there's a lot of motion that it can move. You can see that we can move quite a long distance. So we can actually move the entire uh, T-slot plate distance forwards and backwards, probably a little more than that even. Motion's actually pretty nice. Uh, but I'm just surprised how small this plate actually is at the end of the day. It does come with clamps here, uh, which are neat. Uh, this plate here is loose out of the box. It's okay, because we're gonna take this whole machine apart. But uh, I just think that's a bit odd. I'm thinking maybe their screws aren't tapped deep enough. It's hard to get a view in here because uh, this cavity is so deep and yet the opening is so small, so the camera has to be really, really close to, uh, to get a shot. Uh, but the entire body of this motor is moving and there's a belt drive, I guess, that you get in there. Uh, you know, they, they includes a belt tensioner. Well, I'm not sure how that works yet. One of the things that surprises me is just how much room they've wasted inside of this machine or put another way, how tall the machine is for, for the area here. You can see that we've got a stepper motor here that is just has a directly coupled uh, I'm not sure if that's a neat Acme or not I don't I don't think that's an Acme thread but we can see uh, but you know a lot of times you'll just use a belt drive so you can turn the motor back around because this is an extra like three inches shorter the machine could be the connection here I might need to turn this light way up but you might not be able to see it but 
the stepper that's on the outside on the left side here is just kind of plugged in and then heat shrunk and uh, I, I can see aluminum potentially getting in there and causing a problem. The e-stop here is, it actually rotates in place. So this is a interesting thing here. So this e-stop, e I can just rotate it around. You can see the wires and they're twisting just out of, the, out of the box. Again, I haven't done anything to this device. Uh, you can see that very, very quickly it's loose. So typically an e-stop, you know, you push it and then that's how you open it. Uh, you know, obviously it's just tightening a nut, but I would imagine that when we open this up, we'll see that the, uh, there's not a D, there's actually a hole. So typically you'd have like a 12 millimeter or 16 millimeter hole, but it'll have a D cut through it so that this can't rotate. Uh, this does not have it obviously because it spins. Uh, so we'll look at that when we take it apart. Uh, as far as the, the plate itself, it's weird that they're not face milling this. You can see this is actually machined by a quarter inch uh, tool or you know maybe a maybe a three-eighths but probably a quarter um, curious maybe they're machining it on their machine I don't know but if, if I were using a Haas or something I would just have like a four inch face mill facing this off uh, t-slots it seems like it's a, an industry standard that's a it's actually pretty wide a hefty t-slot which is which is neat uh, they've got their um, squaring fixture bracket there so yeah, that's, that's cool. Uh, I don't know what the heck's going on back here. We've got this X in here with a bunch of holes for some reason. I, you know, I guess it's a rigidity X brace. Not sure why it's three separate pieces. Maybe they're squaring it somehow. One thing that's neat, actually, I really like the way they've done this channel groove in their plastic. So they're routing all of their wiring and they've actually machined channel grooves in here and then they put their wire in and then you can see that the wires just kind of pull out. I think the execution is actually pretty sloppy, but the idea is really good. Um, I guess the, maybe they glued those in. I, I don't know, maybe it's just a very high silicon wire and they're just expecting it to stay in there. Um, but, okay. All right, so here's my first nitpick. So in my opinion, software shouldn't expire, especially software that is linked to a piece of hardware. And, um, Tools app. Okay. Pushed at 7.40 a.m. Unidentified developer. So they don't actually have a uh, developer's license with Apple, so that's fun. So you just gotta do the right click open there. But let's see what happens. Initializing. Okay, the e-stop button is pressed. Yeah, okay. It's neat that they can tell that at least. Um, one of the, just a gripe I had is that the USB plug is on the side and that just seems like it's gonna get broken. I guess if you put it on the back, it might get broken too, but it just seems a bit flaky. Uh, okay, so the e-stop, again, we pointed out before that the nut, the nut in the back wasn't tightened, so we'll just go ahead and do that. As soon as we do that, I'm gonna come back over here and safety cover is open. So they do have the safety interlock here. Uh, it's a magnetic, so I'm doing this as I'm, as I'm seeing it here. So they have a safety interlock right there, and it seems like it's a magnet on the cover. So they've actually just uh, put a magnet in there. So of course the uh, solution to that is we're gonna just grab a magnet. Uh, I don't like safety interlocks. We're gonna just put that right there. So there we go, we've got our safety interlock, and now it's beeping. I think that might have been the motor making the noise. Let's see. I know this camera works pretty shaky here. <laughs> is what it is. So let's try again. Okay, I guess that was just when it connected. So we'll go ahead. I'm going to quit Phantom. And we're going to reopen it. I'm surprised how long the app takes to open. I know you can't see it right now, but there it is. So we're initializing. And safety cover is open. So this is interesting here. So it's saying the safety cover is open. But then it's also telling me to home the machine. Uh, let's just see if it'll home. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna pull back here and we can just look at everything all at once. You're gonna see my face, I'm sure, uh, in all of this. But yeah, let's click, let's home. So it will home. So I guess it's just a warning with the safety cover. That is a very slow home. Uh, I think you could home like three or four times faster than that. So yeah, this is a, some kind of magnetic I, that is, it's just a plunger. So we're gonna just, it's just tripping an optical plunger. It's not even centered all the way. Oh my. I don't know. So that was our, okay, we were, yeah. So this is doing a rough and then a precision 
home. This is really slow. There's no reason the machine is down this slow. I can see their anti-backlash nut here is a typical spring type right there. Uh, I think when we try and measure the backlash, we're going to see there's a ton of backlash on this machine. Uh, also, their homing switches are, they're not leaving a whole lot of room there at all. It might just be a quarter millimeter. Also, why, why do we home all three stages separately from each other? That seems poorly executed. I mean, look at how long we're homing here. Uh, and we weren't even, the X was all the, or this is Y, sorry, the Y was all the way forward, but the Z and the, and the X were only halfway. This, this homing process is, wow, very slow uh, and, and unnecessarily slow. There's no effect if you do a very fast home uh, and then you do your precision home at the end. I'm really curious. I think that those are just mechanical plungers and not optical. And, uh, you know, in, in this environment, it makes sense, I guess. You do have a lot of chip debris in there that might block an optical face. So if they're using an optically cut switch that just has a mechanical plunger, eh, okay, fine, maybe that's good. But maybe it's not, we'll have to see. Okay, so we've honed the machine. And the first thing I wanna do is, uh, I wanna get to some kind of debug thing where I can type in commands. So I'm gonna, again, close the safety cover, see if it does that silly beep again. Well. Yeah, it is. It's actually, they're actually using the motor. So there's, they're actually, okay, fine. They're beeping the motor. For some reason though, it only does it the first time you put the magnet down. And, okay, fine, whatever. Um, yeah, okay. So let's come to uh, jogging window and we're going to hit install too. I wanna see if this moves quicker now. Okay, it does at least. So pretty standard. It sounded a lot like gerbil motion to me. <coughs> we'll see. See if this thing's running gerbil underneath the hood. Uh, okay, so apparently that's the tool install position. And I want to move Z down. And I just want to jog. That's a really slow acceleration profile. So I wanna see if I can crash the, okay, it, does, it prevents you from crashing, so that's good. This is interesting. So, very slow acceleration. It seems like we, the, the head is clearing the top block there. And let's see if we can crash that. Okay, so actually, yeah, we crashed Y, which is fun. Uh, so that we've actually run out of distance, which means because we've crashed now, we're probably gonna hit the hard limit switch here when we go back the other way. Let's see. Nope, okay, well, we didn't. Let's see. Well, I want to see what happens when you hit a limit switch, because that hasn't been defined yet. Let's see. Well, we didn't crash that time, but if we rehome, we probably would. So let's move to the other side. First of all, I just want to see what happens when we hit the limit switch. That's definitely a mechanical button I'm clicking. Um, so that is not terribly accurate. Um, but interestingly, even though I've tripped this limit switch, the machine doesn't seem to care. I can still move, so that's odd, to say the least. Uh, let's move X that way. Oh, I can't crash there. Let's see if we can crash X on the other side. Wow, they leave a lot of room over here. That's four or five millimeters on that side. So, okay, fine, whatever. Uh, a lot of this is just going to be fine, whatever. Uh, so step is allowing you to step one millimeter, 0.1, and 0 0.01 millimeters. Um, bad relative position. It doesn't know where Z is. I wonder if we trip the other limit switches if we will lose them. Of course, we need to find them. Here's one limit switch, so we're going to trip it. got the rubber boot over it. Um, that one's not clicking. At least I don't hear it. Fine, okay. Uh, I haven't found a Y limit switch yet. It's over here somewhere. Let's see if we can, that's probably what this is, this other wire I couldn't figure out. Yeah, there it is. I'm just hiding out there. That one does click. 
Um, now I've got the limit switch held down and uh, I'm in step mode. Seems like we ignore the limit switches completely, which means you'll never know if you crash. So um, I'm not going to crash the machine yet because I do want to actually take some measurements beforehand. I guess I'll finish this off. I really just want to see if jog milling bed, it's like the tool. I'm not installing a tool. I don't know why it's doing that. I didn't tell you to do that, but I guess it's going back to where it was. I'm going to rehome just because we're there. God, it's slow. What are our other options? Origin, loading. Hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, that's the loading position, which, gosh, look, we're in the loading position now, but we've still got like two inches here that we could come forward, uh, but we don't. So, okay. Um, origin. I guess that's zero, zero, zero. And uh, again, we, we already looked at the install tool location. Let's close that again. That's, that's such a silly little thing. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna hit back here. Uh, there. I don't like that it automatically goes back. Hold buttons down for distance movement. So, I don't see anywhere where I can type in commands manually, which is, okay. It seems like the settings button doesn't work, but it works there. Uh, debug console. Can I type commands in here, like home? Have fun. Okay, so token value. Okay, so we've got a bunch of stuff here. Look at that, you can see all, so we do keep all the stuff that we're sending. Uh, active for configuration, show motor settings, dollar sign one. So yeah, this is definitely a gerbil-esque thing. Uh, enter does not send the command. So wow, interesting. I don't know why they're doing it. That way. Well, they have a lot of debug information in here. Uh, yeah, wow, they have a ton of uh, they say the Y max velocity is 50, 60 millimeters per minute. So let's try that with X. So we're going to do a G1 X minus, I don't even know what we're in. Let's do a G90, G21, uh, and then we'll do a G1, X minus, uh, there's gotta be at least 200 millimeters there. And we'll say F 5,000 millimeters. That's it, I, I just don't think it can move that quickly. Again, enter does not send the command. So we just crashed the machine, it has no soft limits, I guess. <coughs> that cough was intentional. Um, yeah, we're not looking at the limit switches at all. It doesn't look like we're bounding anything. Uh, let's see if we can figure out where we are, which I don't know how to do, but in gerbil it's question mark. And the machine is in a stop state. Uh, oh, okay, spindle control. Continuous motion, G17, stop, home. So we still think we're home, even though we've just crashed the machine. I think it's gonna require a little bit of playing around with it. So we think that we're at minus 200 millimeters now, but obviously we crashed. I think this might work in positive space, so let's just go the other way and we'll do, uh, uh, did I do X? Yeah, X plus, 200. And again, enter does not type the command. Cool. We don't have any torque. I mean, look, we just crashed the machine to the side and we don't have any soft bounding at all. But also, we didn't. Yeah, there's very little torque there. So we're going to take this little bottle of rubbing alcohol and put it right there. That's just a polyethylene thing. So I'm basically going to run the gantry into that. And we're going to say uh, that's going to be an X uh, plus. 
50. And enter does not send it. We have no torque at all. Look, that bottle just, it just lost steps immediately. So <clears throat> this machine does not actually have a lot of torque. Uh, and we can even try it now, we're stationary. And so one thing I wanna mention is that this machine still thinks it's just fine. We're in a stop state, e stop is closed, interlock's closed, everything's all peachy, our feed rate's 5,000 millimeters per minute. We're not getting there, by the way. Uh, gosh, what is that? That's uh, 200 inches per minute. No way. Get my little trusty TI-89 out, 25.4. It's 197 inches per minute. So, yeah, we've crashed the machine, so now if we do a uh, X, minus 500. We're gonna just crash this all the way on the other side. We're gonna hit send command. And our little alcohol bottle lives to see another day. Guys, I, I'm, look how flexible this bottle is. So it's got an e-stop, but I just wanna show you how little torque this has. I'm just gonna stick my hand in there because I don't think it's gonna hurt. This is not advised. Uh, we're gonna say X plus uh, 500. And we'll get ready on the east stop if we need to, but guys, this is not a CNC machine. <laughs> That's how confident I was. So we're gonna say X minus 500 again, and uh, check this out. I'm pushing this by hand, the opposite direction. So this machine has a no torque. So That's a Unfortunate for Bantam tools. Uh, that that's a uh, that is very disappointing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give this for now a thumbs down. Uh, your cutting profiles are gonna just be terrible on this thing. We could probably do the same thing on Y. So we'll say uh, Y plus 500. And um, I'm gonna just because I don't know maybe the stepper driver is broken. I'm gonna put our little volunteer alcohol bottle back there. So, not only does this machine have terrible torque so far, terrible, like terrible with capital, probably all the letters in that are, are capitalized, um, it, the limit switches don't hard limit, so you can just run it in. So right now, if, if we looked at the machine state, again, I don't know the command for it, but I, when I send question, ah, it crashed, okay. So... Kind of off to a bad start. I'm not gonna report that, I'm just gonna click ignore because, yeah. So safety, safety cover is open even though it's very clearly closed right now. Safety cover is open. Settings. Uh, just to reiterate this, so a lot of times when you're moving steppers faster, they, well actually all the time, when you're moving steppers faster, they lose a lot of torque. So let's come back in and I have a run warm up routine. Okay, fine. Uh, we're gonna, we'll get there eventually. We're gonna launch our debug console and see if it'll let us move without homing. Maybe, who knows, maybe it's still homed. <clears throat> Let's do a G1 um, X plus 200 and we're gonna do it at F100, which is 100 elements. So it's gonna move for two minutes, basically. We're gonna hit send command here. And uh, we didn't have to home, which is interesting. So, I'm probably going to need to move more. So you can see we're actually sending all of these positions. Uh, it's just all coming back in our console log. That's pretty slow. So we'll go ahead and just throw our rubbing alcohol in there. See if, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's not even pushing against the metal portion. It's actually just pushing against the plastic on the side. But I just, I don't see the torque being there. But we'll see, maybe at slower speed, we've got a ton of torque suddenly. starting to compress. Nah, nah, and there's just not a lot of torque there. So we're losing steps back and forth there. <laughs> I didn't know something was wrong. <laughs> I think that our uh, anti-backlash is not. Yeah, well, we just can yeah. So... So a piece just fell off.
interesting. I, yeah, okay, that's a piece off the cover. So we just, that piece just fell out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's see what we decided. There's not a lot of torque there. Uh, I guess when we hit the, okay, so that was nice before. And uh, I think we might have stripped this nut out. Oh, that sounds terrible. I don't know how to get out of the console. So, yeah. No idea how to get out of this. Clear? Well, let me just, okay, yeah. detach. At least that will let us put it out of the way attach. There's an X there. Fine, okay. I want to go to jog home slowly. You know what? Here's a better way to home. Uh -oh, we can actually see too. If we open this back up, okay, well at least we're going to go there. There. And there. Okay. So <clears throat> we've kind of lost our ability to home. I don't know why, but I know that putting this here makes it at least beep. And then that falls off. Um, so, okay, there it goes. Now can I home? No. Uh, yeah. So there's a home button. Safety cover is open, which it is, which it is not. And I can show you that here as well. If we close that. The safety cover is definitely not open. Let's just do that. And then we're not just listen to that silly beep ever again either. That is just stupid to have on a CNC machine. Okay, let's launch debug console. Rebooting, broken, escape, so that's just me. Flagging that, e-stop, broken, and act, and act, okay, panic. So I'm not really sure how we recover from this other than just quitting, because, I mean, can I step? No, no idea, I'm lost, so let's just quit, we'll reopen it. This is going slower than I thought, because um, it doesn't work well so far. <laughs> Let's start homing again. We're already on the limit switches. I don't think it likes being on the limit switches to start with, which is, uh, it's like a gerbil point seven fix. Uh, that's, if that didn't make sense, um, gerbil point seven was uh, a long time ago. I'm very I'm intimately familiar with gerbil. Uh, and that's like 2014 that they got it. So yeah, it seems like we cannot home when we're actually on the limit switches, which is stupid. Um, but also we can't move off of them because we're energized, fine. So let's see if we can now home. Nope. So it seems like we're getting stuck in that homing routine and, um, the software really needs to be able to handle that better. Um, so we're going to initialize again. Let's see if we can home now that we're not sitting on the limit switches. So I think we broke it. When all else fails, have you tried turning it off? And back on again? We're going to have a cold start here. So <clears throat> let's see how these are moving. So we don't have a fat short, but we were able to turn the lights off. So that's cool. So if you move the bed, the back EMF generated by the stepper is overloading their single quadrant power supply. Um, so they don't have a zener dial there to break down. And gosh, it's, I'm moving so slow. Yeah, so this power supply is not terribly stable. You should be able to move your gantry when you're unenergized. Uh, I know they're gonna say that, oh man, why are you moving the gantry manually? Well, your homing routine is really slow. Just, you can just start there. But regardless, let's move these back there. Move that over there. 
And let's see if we can home. So yeah, we were just in some goofy state. Notice again that I moved these because it's just so slow. I don't know why we do find the Z first, but then we should do X and Y at the same time. There's no reason to, to do them separately other than just laziness. Look how rigid this rib plate is. This is a stiffening thing to keep the machine from, from swaying this direction uh, to, to brace our upper gantry here. And look how beefy it is here. And then it's like slightly less beefy here, you know, so you can have parts overhang. But look how small it is underneath. It's like maybe 14 millimeters. I, I don't think it's that rigid. Uh, of course, they've got a much more rigid frame in the back, but this is very, seems very unnecessary. Uh, and I guess they tried to make it lighter by cutting these holes in it or something. Um, okay, so let's see if we can get the spindle to spin now. And it's so weird to me that this is not a clickable button. I actually have to come down here and we're gonna hit uh, spindle control. So you would think spindle control would move the spindle, but this is actually like the gantry. It's XYZ control, so that's weirdly named. Uh, I don't know why we can't tell where Z is. I think that's really odd. Uh, we, sh we should probably be able to tell where Z is. Um, I don't know why we pull off by four millimeters and 2.5. That seems like a really weird homing spot. Uh, where was the uh, spin motor here? So let's see, if your machine is operating in a cold environment, you may see improvement. Okay, so let's warm this up. Run the spindle at increasing speeds for about 10 minutes. You will not be able to cancel this process and we'll need to wait for it to end. That's not what well, we definitely will make it to the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and just close that. So I guess that's the slow speed. This is gonna be a rather disappointing teardown. That, that's my uh, little spoiler. I don't actually know that it's true yet, but yeah, it seems like these are too thick. Yeah, this is because, uh, you know, again, the great COVID plastic shortage I mentioned earlier uh, is, um, okay, so now we're moving quicker. Our little red disc is trying to fly off there. Yeah, there it goes. Now he's off. Um, yeah, I really don't like that call it note. He's just chilling there. Let's, let's see what happens when we hit the e-stop. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit the e-stop. So uh, when you hit the e-stop, you have to come to a complete stop in two seconds. That did not happen. Uh, they're not breaking the motor. They're just turning it off. Uh, emergency button pressed. So let's go ahead and see if it comes back up to speed, which is not allowed. And it looks like the answer is no. I'm going to go ahead and hit this e-stop again. And I'm going to take this collet nut off. I don't want it to fly off. When you don't have a tool installed, it's, it's loose, just sitting there. And we need to pop the e-stop out. And uh, we're gonna just hit cancel and come to settings and one more, I can't run the warrant routine. So home. It's really weird. Once you hit this e-stop, the it seems like motion is disabled even though it thinks that motion is still enabled because you know, I've clicked the home button and nothing has happened. And uh, yeah, so that just seems like a weird little oddity. Uh, there's obviously some kind of hard lockout that's not being cleared. So let's come into settings and click jog here. Now we're initializing. So it seems like we're stuck. Stuck here initializing. So uh, I'm gonna once again turn this off and back on. Let's so press the power button. Okay. Peppers are nice and cool because <laughs> they're not driving them enough to torque. Uh, or, you know, they might have a lower power mode when it's not moving. So I'm probably being a little unfair there. So we're gonna do our slow ass homing. It's kind of a neat feature that they have. Um, they're uh, manually tuning with just a shredded, uh, threaded screw with just a nut. Well, that's, a, that's a neat feature. It's not, I can't really complain about that. That's actually kind of cool, fine. Yep, so uh, every number you see here is a thou of play.
Sorry, I just grabbed her. So I'm very easily, this is energized right now, and I'm very easily able to uh, just with hand force put, uh, what is that, five thou of force on there, and, and then the other way as well. Um, also on just the X as well, even with these really rigid shafts, I'm surprised how much uh, play that is there. I mean, we're talking like, I'm putting 20 pounds of force here and we're getting 4,000 of motion. Just move this to see how the flatness is. Now, once I hit that end plate, it's actually, I'm actually surprised at the flatness there. And we're gonna hit in the back there. So we have 1,000 over about three inches. That's not terrible. Uh, I, their e-stop circuit works really weird. It'll be interesting to go in there and look at it. Um, but yeah, okay. Now I wanna jump over to here and our needle's gonna fall off, but I think that the ball head's gonna be fine enough that it's not gonna matter. So we're still at zero and close enough. So they've actually come through. I think that, oh, you know what they're doing is I think they're actually, earlier I complained that they didn't actually face this. I think they're actually using the machine to face the surface proper. Any concerns that I previously had about, uh, I don't want to take this apart prior to uh, looking at it. I don't actually care about any of it more because this thing has so much play that it doesn't even really matter. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start taking this thing apart. So we're using uh, a split washer, but there's no spring left on the split because it's a cheap, cheap split washer. That's. Probably not gonna be able to see that, but let's see if we can zoom in here. Focus. Yeah, so the, not a good split washer. It seems like we found our first 3D printed part maybe. Yep. So 3D printed little back bracket. Don't know why, because it, it's metal back there. Oh, okay, yeah. So it's actually the spacers on the outside. That's why it's there. Uh, that's again, probably because of the great 2020, 2021, uh, COVID plastic part shortage. Uh, so they're actually using that to space it away from the, the wall. So if you're not familiar, you basically cannot buy plastic right now that is uh, thinner than about 150 thou, and sure enough, it's 172. Burn hazard, hot surface, a lot of cool. It's weird because they have the burn hazard on the, on the accessible cover here, but then the hazardous moving parts um, is down there. I guess so that when this is open, you can't say you didn't see it, but of course they could put it on both sides. That label looks really cheap and it's uh, poorly applied. Uh, this, putting the holes next to a crease like that is uh, not ideal and you can, you can see that it's, it's hard to form around a hole like that. I'm sure that the manufacturer, whoever folded this sheet metal, probably complained about that. Uh, let's get these sides off. I'm going to go ahead and unplug our USB or power. I didn't use the red power cord because I just think that's silly. If red was going to be your gimmick. Make those red. If these are nuts, that's just going to be annoying. Oh, God, thank you. Okay, yeah, they're pim certs. The reason I didn't do pim certs here is because it's in the folded crease and you can't put a pim cert in a folded crease. Um, so that's, that's why. These screws are so loose. Uh, I can't imagine they don't all just shake out. Also, there's no washers here on the plexiglass, so that's gonna crack. Um, this plexiglass, I, it's probably why they don't tighten the screws a whole lot, to be honest. You shouldn't be able to loosen an M4. Or rather, this is, uh, yeah, it's an M4. You really shouldn't be able to loosen an M4 with the long side of an Allen wrench. And, okay, we've got at least four different screw lengths so far on this plate. Also, it's uh, 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 21 screws that hold this just this side plate on. Okay, well, there's our end plate one. It's got uh, a routing housing out of there so that these guys, if they stick out, don't run into it. Still haven't figured out what these are for. It seems like some kind of tightening wedge, like maybe they stick a piece of metal in there and then tighten that down. That'll be interesting to look at. I haven't, haven't come across that. I'm gonna go out on a, on a limb here and say that this probably uses a uh, LRS 350 supply. Here's one that I have lying around. 
Here's an Allo on S350-24. That's probably what it uses, if I had to guess. Yeah. Uh, probably like that. We'll see in a second, though. So let's see what we've got in the electronics department. Okay, this slides off. Hey, look at that. It's an LRS 350-24. Seems like it has an 8-gig card in it, an industrial 8-gig card in it. Uh, they've got a jumper in here for the steppers. And, uh, goodness, how are they running? Oh, wow. Here's their motor controller. This is just an off-the-shelf heat trunk controller. So they say that they're closed loop, and it's possible that they are. But I think this is just an off-the-shelf it's Synthetos! <laughs> They're just using the Synthetos. Uh, this is their stepper driver. This is just the Synthetos. Uh, it used to be called the G-Shield. Uh, I have a box of them somewhere. Uh, yeah. So, same company here uh, is Synthetos. So they're just using an off-the-shelf uh, board. Of, obviously, this is a much older version that supports just uh, three steppers. Um, that's funny. Okay, well that's cool because it just means that we can very easily uh, come in and, and uh, you know, obviously see the Synthetos board here. So this is all their steppers. This connector is a little bit janky. It's not the right size connector. So this is a much smaller footprint connector than uh, the natural housing. And then the, the jumper in there is just okay. But yeah, so motor one, two, three, four. So this is a four individual. This is just a DRV8018. 8018. That's why I was saying earlier it sounds just like the uh, you know, a G Shield, a gerbil board, because the gerbil uses the synthetos a lot. Uh, but yeah, this is just an off-the-shelf board. And uh, I guess, yeah, here's where their stepper drivers are. And they're only using three of the four, so they're paying for this fourth DRV8018 that they're not using. Uh, but yeah, here's their Bantam PCB power board. Um, so they come in through, they have ferrite beads, here's where their safety interlocks all come in. There, this is a, a silicon wire, it's a very thick silicon wire, that's interesting. And, um, let's see, that is one of our steppers. Let's go ahead and we're going to just take our power off here. So they've got an interval switch. <laughs> this is a really simple PCB. So this is our power board. Uh, we've got some FETs here. What, that's our power input for the steppers. And uh, this is probably to our, our uh, spindle drive. And then our tiny, yeah, this is the tiny G board. That's right. And they have some kind of e-stop interlock here. Uh, so I imagine when we, uh, I was gonna say when we plug it in, we see this e-stop light come on and off. Uh, let's take this off. See if it's hiding underneath. Uh, Synthetos Tiny G board, that's funny. Okay, so they definitely uh, did not make their own <laughs> driver PCB. That's interesting because this is an expensive board. Holy moly, this is super simple. So, yeah, this is their three phase motor driver. This is just an off the shelf. Uh, just like this is just a purchase solution. Uh, I'm gonna cut that off because um, I can always just tape over it. Let's cut on that side instead. Yeah. So there's some snot glue there. Don't know if that's because it overheated. No, it's definitely not because it overheated. Um, That's a heat sink. So this is supposed to be heat synced uh, to something, and it's not. I imagine that this snaps in half, or maybe it's all soldered together. Yeah, it's all soldered together. But yeah, this is just another off-the-shelf uh, board with a little serial control here. And that goes to our uh, G-Shield here, but it's an interlock. I mean, I think interlock is that. I'm not really sure <laughs> where their logic is. Cause yeah, it's, they're literally just using the tiny G. Uh, yeah, it's the tiny G V9 board and you USB plug straight into it. So this is their enti the entirety of their PCB. So like, 
this is off the shelf and purchased, this is off the shelf and purchased, uh, and then they've just got this very basic uh, interlock board here, and that seems to be the entirety of the of the logic on this board. Um, okay, I'm actually expecting a whole lot more. It's, it's really crazy that that's the motor control resolution. All right, I went ahead and took all but just a couple of the screws out of the right side of this as well. And what we're gonna do, there's a light bar in here I need to unplug, and I've just left one or two screws in here, so I need, to, I need to unplug this light bar, which again is using this really nice high temperature silicon wire. Uh, and then uh, if I remove this screw here, then uh, the top, both the top cover and this side plate should come off at the same time. We'll start with this top plate, which my goodness, that's heavy. This is unnecessarily heavy. Look, this is just a, a super bright LEDs board. They didn't, I'm not sure they made any uh, of the, the, I think they made one PCB and everything else is just mechanical. This board is heavy. We're gonna have to weigh it. I imagine that's, that is several pounds and uh, completely unnecessarily. So I don't see any reason why that it's gonna be that big. Uh, and then we've got the side plate here. Again, there's no fan on this side either. It seems like I've got a, oh, it's one of these end channel grooves. Again, as I was mentioned earlier, I think this is a neat idea, right? Like they, they, uh, they've milled these wires such that they fit in the silicon wire groove. Uh, so that's a, it's a neat, uh, it's a neat way to, to get the wires secure without having to latch them down. It seems like they're having to do some kind of uh, secondary step there on the lacquering. Um, but yeah, you know, again, this is a, probably a rather expensive part to make. Uh, yeah, no fan. There's no uh, fan to cool this interior at all. Um, but look, now we're inside. We've got uh, the various pieces of, of uh, the silicon wire coming out. I think that, again, I think the reason they have used this nice wire is so that it fits in those grooves well. I think this piece might be a rigidity piece uh, because the X table was probably moving and they, they probably had to, to add that to make it rigid. Uh, it definitely doesn't need to be as thick as it is, but eh, whatever. It really is just amazing to me how off the shelf all this is. This is a, this is a logoed Bantam motor, but it's, it's really small. I can't imagine it's anywhere near the power output that they, they say it is. Again, it's just powered by this off the shelf uh, uh, motor controller, just closed loop, I guess. Uh, and then back to the, the tiny G here, this is just uh, a synthetic, uh, Synthetos um, G, G shield. It's just running, what do they call it? It's running G2 core, uh, but it's just the tiny G V9 hardware. Uh, and it seems pretty stock. You know, it's got this little SD, micro SD card, and we'll definitely take a peek and see. But I'm thinking you could pretty easily, uh, among the terms of the GPL V2 license that, that that goes under, I think you could pretty easily just copy whatever however this is enumerating to the host and then you use your machine with, with the Bantam. Particularly because the Bantam uh, software doesn't seem to care about the software hard limits. It'll move to any position you tell it to. Uh, but yeah, coming in here, uh, yeah, this, this X bracing here just seems uh, over complicated, unnecessary. I, there's a lot of words that come to mind on that. It, it's, um, it's interesting, to say the least. Uh, it seems like we can just unplug <coughs> these steppers, and this is just a standard stepper. It has no encoder feedback, as we saw. Uh, dings motion. It says dings motion. Um, let's see, where do we go from here? Gosh, this is just painfully simple on the inside. We've got our e-stop that, uh, when, when the e-stop routes back here, uh, It just comes up to this board here and uh, plugs in on this connector right here. So this is our e-stop and our front door switch and it just plugs in right there like that. And then we've got uh, this one other switch is a uh, uh, limit switch or something. Yeah, definitely. So because this wire is all like this, it's just so it'll fit in the plastic. This silicon wire is not cheap. Um, yeah, so let's get this back plate off. I'm surprised how little uh, engineering went in this from a uh, electrical standpoint. There's a lot of cost in this device that is uh, that they're having to eat. 
by just buying everything off the shelf. Okay. Another 3D printed part. Is that cut plastic? Yeah, that's actually machined plastic. But just a little cover for the limit switch to keep the chips out. This is actually a phantom design. Look at that. Limit switch board. Rev A. Yep, it's just a mechanical plunger. Cover. Two little plastic covers. Wow, this is a custom injection molded part. That wasn't cheap. Look at this. Okay, let's look at this part. Definitely a new mold. You can see they've actually cut in here. There's some debris left over from just being injected. It's odd that there's debris there. I don't see how it would get in, except it's it's leaking in through the top here. So but, um, stay. So, there's stuff is leaking in over through the stepper here, and it's just getting stuck in this bay. I imagine after a few hours of milling, this would just be absolutely full of stuff. Uh, but yeah, look at this, just custom molded part. This is probably a $10,000 mold. Probably a $4 part in, uh, in the low quantities that they're making it. It's actually a pretty nice finish. Okay, let's remove this one. Yeah, look, here's how this is attached. Bunch more screws on the bottom. I'm interested, uh, really, I'm curious to find out how the tightening is on that shaft. Don't know why I didn't just screw a bolt through the top. But, could be neat. Okay, here's the other side, just the aesthetic. Okay, probably the $6,000 mold there. Good thing they got a cover over on that one because that one's going to get dirty. And of course the switch won't come out. Yeah. That switch is broken, yo. Cool. Okay, so uh, at this point all of our wires are loose and uh, all we gotta do is take all of the mini uh, of these out and then we'll be able to take this back cover off. Is that a... They put hot glue in uh, to, to keep the aluminum from coming through here. So they've actually got hot glue. Okay, well, hot glue in a machine. You know, in this case, it's not holding anything together, but... It's always good when you can build your product without using hot glue or duct tape. Okay, so this should remove that. Again, this cover is really fucking heavy. Sorry, pardon my French. Uh, they're using, this is a, just a really thick, and look at, they've got this uh, inset clamp for the uh, umbilical cord there. Look at all these screws, man, these poor assemblers having to put that together. Okay, but at long last, we are down to just the mechanicals. Yeah, I'm not sure. They were talking about this in one of their posts about how they came up with this brilliant squaring something. It's obviously to keep the gantry from rattling back and forth, but it doesn't, it, it, we'll see. <laughs> kind of at a loss on words on that. Just a random screw just sitting there. That's one screw we don't have to put back, I guess. Uh, again, as I was saying before, this piece right here is, is so rigid, but uh, this bottom enclosure is not, not solid, right? So if we take the, the bottom off, which we might as well do, we're going to lose our feet, obviously. I love this, it's <laughs> just a shoddy piece of foam to keep that from vibrating in. Yeah. Yep. This is a four millimeter foot, and honestly, they're pretty rigid. Um, I would have expected them to break off by now, but they've got a... I mean, they're going to break off eventually, now that I look at it. Uh, it, has a, it has a washer plate built into it, um, and then just, just the standard button head screw. 
Eh, that's probably going to live the life of this machine. Look at all these bolts on the bottom. Gosh, if you're a similar talent and you need, I will. I think all I have to do is take these feet and then two more off, and that's going to be it. I think everything else is just on the frame. This is just a standard double-ganged backlash nut. A very small shaft. It's not a ball screw, that's for sure. It's definitely just like a plastic Acme screw. I don't know that for sure. We'll look when we, when we look inside, but okay, so there's a little, a neat little triangular doodad. Yeah, they've just got back-to-back -back, uh, nuts. And look, you can see all the chips that have already gotten in them. So yeah, that's it. It's just... Uh, just spring loaded. Plastic. This is a plastic bushing, so just want to point that out uh, for a long term long term usability. It's plastic. And uh, I'm just gonna say that again. It's plastic. I don't know what that is for. It's some kind of shim. But yeah. Plastic, plastic, plastic. That's <laughs> okay. It's going to get worn out real bad, too. You can see all the aluminum that's already gotten in there. They've got slots here so that the aluminum can maybe find its way out. We're kind of hoping a prayer type stuff there. So now this should just pull right off. Oh, this has actually got a slight seat in the bearing. So just a standard off-the-shelf dings motion USA motor. So I'm going to take off their little squaring plate here. And... in the pile of things and uh, the piece that it comes with they I guess this is the, the test piece they machined here and it's got pins to square it interesting why the extra piece so they've got these precision alignment pins there Then they've got this secondary piece underneath the insulation. I guess so you can make your own plates. This is odd here too. I wonder if they're machining this. Oh wow, okay, check this out. So they've got a permanently pressed in piece here and this is just round, just a, you know, five, five millimeter. Don't wanna say numbers if I don't know, let's see six millimeter insert basically it's a little larger than that and then they've got a second insert here and i think they're actually machining it with the machine for squareness so um this is not square it is the same six millimeters over here but as you come over here it's four millimeters or whatever so uh, i guess they're using that to uh figure out where square is but as i was saying earlier they've got the threading in here this is the screw that goes in there i don't know why they threaded that because it's threaded the wrong Size. That should just be a through hole, probably. Here's something interesting. We got four black oxide coated uh, bolts. Actually, only three of them are four. One of them is just a standard zinc. I wonder if that's some kind of a warrant canary per se, so that they know if the machine has been taken apart. We're going to say that that's our white head so that we can put it back together correctly. Interesting. So, here's number two. Wow, they got eight bolts here. That's completely unnecessary. And also, these bolts have to be insulated. Yeah, sure enough, they've got these plastic insulating washers in them. First. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so this is just a PCB. Honestly, it's kind of smart. Back shim, Rev 5. <laughs> they've got a back and a front. Goodness. Why on earth do they have to have five revisions of that? Nice. Yeah, check. Here's a little plastic collar sleeve inserts. Hopefully that doesn't get too hot and melt. Okay, and then here's just our 
the pieces, even these pieces are different. All the pieces are different. There's so much um, unnecessary minor differences that, that are making this more expensive to manufacture. Yeah, it's only the PCB there. Glad we played around with that some. Yeah, check it out. No motion here, and now once you move, it's there. Yeah. So they're just using a standard uh, ball bearing steel there. This is the only insulation layer there, which means if you get any chips of metal across that, it's not going to work correctly. I wonder if I have the large enough. That's a very large square. All right, let's take a peek at the spindle here. I'm done looking at the uh, 28 separate pieces of aluminum that are machined for this design here. So interesting, I tried to find a tool that would uh, come in and loosen these uh, shafts, but I really actually think that what they've done is they screw this hole really close, and then as they screw this piece in, it actually deforms the metal and uh, causes it to, to close here. So I actually think that it's not serviceable. Even if you pull this out, the, it's gonna be uh, uh, dimpled. So I think that's I think that's kind of odd because it what if a bearing breaks and you have to send the machine for service? I I hope I'm wrong on that, but you know when I look in here I, I don't I don't see any other way that that could work. Um, and I, unfortunately I don't have a tool. I'll have to get the right tool because that that would be a to not be able to replace these bearings. I mean well, let's just face it these bearings fail. Uh, there's really no other way around it. But so that's interesting. We'll have to order the the proper size square for that. But let's go ahead and take the logo, which again, I just like to point out, this is how I received it, is, is loose. So I'm gonna take the logo off, and uh, I guess they're probably using bolts that are too long. Now this motor, there's no way it's the power they claim it is. Uh, they claim it's a uh, quarter horsepower cutting power. And uh, just for reference, This is a quarter horsepower motor, brushless DC. And look at that in comparison. It's not even half the size and the diameter is less as well. Um, so I find that very suspect. Oh my gosh, it's moving so much inside. That's embarrassing. That's gonna be uh We'll get, we'll get to it, you'll be able to see it, but that is not a straight head, that's very bent. I, I'm sorry, I just have to show this to you. This is, so watch that head. Do you see how much that head is, is rotating, is wobbly? That, that equates to premature bearing wear and probably all kinds of bad things, so that's interesting. I thought we were gonna find something cool with this spindle design that they touted, so. Uh, yeah, they definitely have a belt we're fighting with. Incorrect, okay. So, there's the, <laughs> oh, that belt is not gonna last long. <laughs> uh, are you serious? That belt is not even three quarters of a millimeter thick. I don't know how thin it is, but uh, it ain't gonna last long. Look at that. That is, oops, sorry little motor. You never did anything wrong to me and here I am just harping all over you. I gotta, I gotta see the thickness on this. 0.5 millimeter thick belt. <clears throat> this belt is that wide. 0.02 inches, that is four sheets of paper thick. How long is that gonna last, right? It's just a friction belt, no teeth, just going around this. Okay, so the reason this is moving around is they've got a, just a washer hanging on the top there. You can already see where the rubber has come off of it. Yeeks. I don't see that last in a really long time. Yeah, if you get rid of the top part, it does look concentric here and they are using a 7,000 bearing. Definitely sticky. Feeling some sticky on those balls. And yeah, this is just gonna cut through your belt. There, that washer's not wide enough. And on the bottom here, let's take this apart first because it's gonna be a lot easier. Look, it's got a marking of 34. And um, 
there's nothing to retain that belt there. Goodness, I'm... I'm a little bit concerned for Bantam here. <laughs> this is not... This is interesting. This is a really odd, like, we need as much RPM as possible. Oh, it's really loose. I have not pre-loosened any of these. And they are just loose, loose, loose. So let's see what happens when we undo... Gosh, their split washers are just terrible. I've already pointed that out previously, so... That's a cheap non-spring steel split washer that does absolutely nothing. Might as well just use a regular washer. At least it won't spread apart on you then. Let's see if there's anything novel. Okay, little skateboard bearing. This is an extra piece. So this is the 29th machined aluminum piece I've found in this machine. Here is the half millimeter thin belt. I, I just can't stress how thin that belt is. And, uh, and here's our more off the shelf motor that is still attached here. Take out 20 screws and it's still attached. So we're going to finally get this 29th piece off. 29 Aluminum pieces. Wow. Okay. Whoops, that's gonna go right on the magnets. <laughs> Alrighty, I think we're gonna definitely have to characterize this motor and uh, see how much torque it actually has. Okay. So yeah, this is just a standard. This is not a Bantam design. It's just a regular old motor with press fit uh, friction surface here that's going to slip like crazy. Uh, this is not how you design a spindle motor. Just going to say that. Just kind of leave that there open-ended. Uh, okay. Well, this leaves our actual spindle body. And uh, gosh, the belt's gonna just get cut off with this washer. It's not even straight. They've had to shim this up so that this screw with its big old button head washer on the back end, it's a countersunk screw that they've put into a little countersunk grommet. That's basically trying to cinch the whole thing together before they tighten it so that your um, bearings are um, forced together. Now, I don't see a way where they have uh, any Belleville springs in here, and so I'm not sure how it is that they're preloading these bearings And you know, this is not a matched set if it was a matched set They would have to be both down here and then screwed together, uh, but there is definitely a bearing here that only has the um, Just the rubber top the Bearing surface to keep debris out of it, which the, the W wiper that that uses is not rated for direct chip evacuation, which obviously the spindle is doing. Um, but, you know, some annoyance here is that I can't take this off to even get in there more because, again, the bolts that they have in here... Um, let's, where am I? Oh, I'm way up top. The bolts they have in here uh, I can't remove because um, I don't have the right tool. And even if I did, I think that, that these are kind of permanently installed. Um, and I tried to go in there. I had a flat head screwed in, and I tried to just bend it with a little plumber's wrench, and uh, definitely did not work. So these are definitely put in there, probably with an impact driver. Um, but yeah, that that spindle is not screaming any kind of confidence to me that it's going to last very long. That is a quarter horsepower driven spindle here shaft. To, to keep the run out low. You've got the bearings here and there. You can see that they've got a Belleville spring in here to preload it. And it's possible there's a Belleville on the other side of this pair um, because of the way it's compressed together, whereas this one's actually pushing out. Uh, I doubt it. Well, uh, so I guess that concludes the teardown of this device. This is, I, I just, I'm just looking at this monstrosity of weight and just 
thinking about how poorly utilized the material is here. So I pointed out a couple times already, move all these spindle parts aside, these little shims. Ugh, I don't even want to put this thing back together. I'm so let down by it. So all the pieces that we've removed uh, have nothing to do with the rigidity of this machine. They play no, no role in making it rid more rigid because they're plastic. <laughs> the, piece, the piece that comes across here and, and secures to here and there is just plastic. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply some force on here. I'll read these numbers off so you can see them. But I'm going to just, I'm not even, can you see my hand here? Okay. I'm going to push on this right here. I'm going to do it. Look, I'm just, can you see this dial spinning? Look, I'm getting... On, on the flexion here. Let me, I'm gonna actually just set this up on some of these NI screwdrivers. So there's our zero now. I'm worried this gauge is gonna just fall off. Look at this. I don't know where we are. Who am I? So, look at that. Look at this movement. This is, I'm not going through any bearings right now. This is just the actual aluminum enclosure here. Look, I, I, this stair gauge is going off center. That, it can only measure like 20 thou. This gauge, I just want to just highlight this. This stair indicator cannot display the amount of flexure that these stationary components just going from right here to right here have. So the reason they've added this rib here is not to have the two bolt holes. It's literally to try and make this bracket stronger. But the answer is, is not to add this. It should be an extension of this piece. This foot should come all the way out to here as an extension. And you're going to run into the same problem here because there's nothing to make that more rigid there. So like, you know, oh, he's pushing there. That's not where any force is. Let's say we took a couple of pieces of uh, rectangular stock. So here's a couple pieces of rectangular stock. And we're gonna just put them there, offset like the table would be. And uh, we'll just leave that like that. And now we're gonna take our hand. And we're gonna just apply some force. I'm not applying a whole lot of force here, and we're getting yeah, that's six thou of of play between it's only one bearing set it's not the bearings that are flexing it's the actual enclosure and we can we can prove that if we just move this out of the way we'll add another piece of rectangular stock here so look i'm going from this shaft here to there back into here and then up through so we are still going through the bottom bearing set there but look it is a ton of, of play there. This is 15 pounds of force. Uh, and so again, we can we can go through no bearings. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take and just move these out of the way, and we're going to put our rectangular stock here and there, and then we're going to come and put a rectangular stock there, and hopefully we have another piece here like this and look we are now going through no bearings we're going directly from this shaft we're not even measuring the flexure on that shaft we're only measuring the flexure right here and it's not good in fact we weren't even measuring this bearing deflection earlier because we were only measuring across uh, this is starting to try and fall apart but look I'm just pushing with with the front of one finger and I think that actually this gauge is, is bottomed out. How far did it go? It wasn't. Let's see. There's our zero. And if we... <laughs> it's so bad. It is so bad how much play that this, this machine has. Uh, especially with this heavy 
as much aluminum as they put in here um, is terrible. It's, it's not even so bad, it's terrible. Um, it, look, look at this, like, oh, I'm sorry, that was actually pushing on the gauge, that's not fair. But, but that's fair, and that's actually just, uh, that I've actually run out of range again on, on the gauge. I can spin it all the way around and bottom it out. And it's all because this joint right here should be a full extension of that. But you're, you're never going to get around it there. With, with, this piece needs to be longer, but the e-stop's in the way. So, not a rigid machine.